John is on his way to meet Portsmouth curator Matthew Sheldon on board HMS Victory, Admiral Nelson's famous flagship from the Battle of Trafalgar. It has also played its part in Thomas Beaton's story. Matthew, thanks for seeing me. John, welcome aboard HMS Victory. Thank you. We have here a um, document that shows he was on board. Thomas Beaton Stoker, and he's here with lots of his messmates, awaiting trial by court-martial for the loss of HMS Tiger. So I thought perhaps I'd show you where he would have lived while he was on board. Yeah, if you could, please. If we go yeah, on down. Yeah. Impressive ship, is it? It is fantastic. Um, three full gun decks, and he was on the lower gun deck. So I'll have to take you all the way down. How many people would live on here? There would have been about 800 people on here. Oof. Um, absolutely crammed in. So this is, would have been his quarters? Yeah, this is the lower gun deck. This is basically where the men ate and slept and lived on board. How many would have been here when he was so here? So he'd have been here with about three to 400 men. 400 men? Yeah, you got, I think, 14 inches to sling your hammock and you had to do everything here. You had to eat, you had to do your washing, you know, get up at six in the morning, get to work, clean the decks. And so in terms of his life here, how long was he here? He was here for six weeks. Six weeks, and this is all waiting for this court martial? It is, yeah. So, mm. what is this? This is a great cabin. This is where the court martial would have taken place. I mean, this was the quarters of Nelson when he was on board. So they would have been brought in here? Presumably this would have been the first time they'd seen anything like this. Yeah, this was the most formal, most important part it's of the ship. impressive, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, it was literally a court. You'd have had um, about ten captains all assembled, and the formal charges would have been read and so on. But this is the thing for me that I can't get my head around. Is he's a stoker. I can't understand why he's getting court martialed for something that's completely beyond his control. He wasn't deciding the direction of the ship, so why is he getting a court martial? You had to inquire into what happened so that he might have known some details of, of what happened. But the people who were really responsible were the master who had to navigate and yeah. the lieutenant. So fairly quickly, the court decided that no blame was imputable to any of the prisoners. So Thomas is acquitted. The other thing that doesn't make sense to me then is on his service record, it's got listed that he, he was in prison, mm -hmm. but not for this. Not for this incident, for something that he alone did. Um, and we've got some documents that will show us uh, exactly what he got up to. Mm. We've got him here, Thomas Beaton. And this is a time when he's gone back out to the Mediterranean on a merchant ship. And we can see here he spends a period in Corradino prison. Where is that? It is actually out in Malta. Um, which was the kind of headquarters of the fleet. This is Malta at the date that he was there. Oh, oh, it's a proper Keep picture. Going. Pull it all the way out. Wow. You can see this is called Ricasoli to Corradino. So right at the far side here is Corradino. And that's where they built the prison. Do we know why he was in prison? What's most likely is it it's just when he's gone out to Malta. Um, and I think he probably um, was distracted by the delights of a run ashore, went ashore in Malta, maybe had too much to drink, and then was days late reporting back. And the captain can award up to 28 days, and he does that, and he then spends his time in this prison. So did this have a detrimental effect on his career then? Because I know that he stayed in for a long time afterwards. Yeah, I don't think it did. We've got his later service career here and he's serving on the Victoria and Albert. And as that sounds, it was the Royal Yacht. Uh -huh. Still a stoker. She's a paddle ship, you can see. She had engines on board, but a very smart vessel. Oh, that's a surprise. And the kind of turnout of the crew was really important. So you have an image here of, this is what the crew looked like. They're in really quite smart gear. Yeah. You know, they've kind of square rig whites, as it were. I don't think we've got Thomas in the picture here but this is absolutely the same date as this ship was being sailed. And we know that at the date that he was on board, September 1868, Queen Victoria and her family actually do come on board. That's fantastic. So he finished at the top? Mm. 
Well done, Tommy. It's been an interesting journey because I started off wanting to find out where our family link with Liverpool came, and that was obviously came via Charles Bishop going there in his career as an entertainer. Um, and then if you look at both men, Thomas and Charles, living as they did in the 1840s, 50s and 60s, when there was lots of changes going on in society. And they basically had a better life than what was allotted to them. They both became educated by during the forces. They were both at the top of their game. I mean, the fact that Thomas served on, on the Royal Yacht, he couldn't have got a better job. And from Charles' point of view, he followed his dream, he found his love of music, he then developed that into a career as a lay vicar and to be good enough to then tour in America. You know, the lesson I've learned from it is it doesn't matter where you're from, what matters is to make the most of your life. You know, none of us are here forever, so you've just got to try and be the best that you can, and I think in their case, they both definitely did it. <laughs>